In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit down. Lovely to see a full church today, and my thanks as every year to the wonderful people who have made our church look so beautiful and so floral and so fragrant this morning, uh, and that's just the flowers. Uh, so thank you so much. Recently we heard on the radio an interview about the Russian and Chinese government's plans to widen their powers, to eavesdrop on private phone calls, emails, and internet use in their campaigns against their perceived Western enemies. The radio interviewer then said a remarkable thing. She said, we all have dirty footprints, don't we? We all have dirty footprints, don't we? She went on, we all have dirty footprints, a past. We all have a past, and some of us feel its burdens more than others. And there was a silence on the radio that sagged like uh, wet washing on the line, her voice stopping and dropping in midair. And as you listened, you felt the interviewer was remembering something that hurt her. And in the quiet, every listener also was reflecting on the hurt in their own past as well. Dirty footprints. Not long ago, a very fast international runner told me about how he ran in training where he lived a measured mile in four minutes, 20 seconds. Actually, this annoyed him because he is a sub four minute miler. And then he realized he'd actually run through a road which had been resurfaced by the council that very afternoon. <laughs> His Nike trainer tarmac footprints <laughs> graced the pavements of that town for several months afterwards. Now in the first paragraph of the gospel this morning, there is a lot of running. You may have noticed it. Running by Mary Magdalene and by Peter and John, each of them in their own way, trying to put things right. You wonder, do they ever retrace their panic footprints in the early morning dew, these running footprints, in their mistaken belief Jesus was gone? Before that wonderful rush of reassurance that our Lord provides, which allows them to walk normally, lightly, and confidently once again. You know, I think the biggest thing, single thing we are aware of is not actually our successes, but rather our mistakes. And after nearly two decades of vickering, as my children call it, <laughs> I think the biggest thing we crave is forgiveness. Forgiveness which you might describe today as kicking off our dirty shoes. We can be plagued by our past, can't we, in a way that poisons our present. The past lies there like a replayed car crash so that the sound of bending metal still shudders in the here and now or in the early hours of the night. We look over our shoulder and see the trail of dirty tarmac footprints leading right up to the back of our shoes where we're now stood. It doesn't take much for a song or a smell or an overheard voice to hook, hook us back up to that memory. And there we are, under a bare bulb in an empty bedroom, cringing and shadows, unshadowed with a bit of, a bit of guilt or a bit of shame. So today, if you want to get even one inch deeper into the Christian faith, then I want to tell you about the greatest truth of Christianity. 
The greatest truth of our faith is forgiveness and that wonderful offer of a second chance. Something no other religion can offer you. And you know it goes further, further than this. Let me explain. In Waghorn's butchers the other day, there was a loud banging coming from inside. And the banging was actually the sound of the butcher's wooden mallet hitting, hitting a block of rich red meat. The butcher was tenderizing the meat, softening it so that that meat could be used in cooking. Or as Private Walker says to Lance Corporal Jones in series four of Dad's Army, <laughs> giving it a couple of wallops with his hammer and keeping his fingers well out of the way. <laughs> and that mallet reminds us how we too are made tender by the mistakes we've made and the blows we've received. Sometimes these can be physical blows or a reminder of the violence, actual, spoken or silent, lurking at the hidden heart of many relationships between husband and wife, partner and partner, or adult and child. Sometimes these blows come like they're leaving the heart so tender that the slightest touch is almost unbearable. And at other times, these blows come more like the full-on smash tackle you might see from the shed at Gloucester Rugby Club. Or as rebounds after the event, like the wrong path taken, which changed a career or an addiction, a marriage or a retirement. Or after bad choices, the harbouring of too much guilt when that guilt harbouring was entirely the wrong thing to do. When we sit, tenderized by mistakes or blows like these, what hope is there for us? Well, the answer is plenty of hope. Through countless stories of despair, I am sure I have heard God say, thank goodness you've given up and come to me. I forgive you. Now that you know you are broken, now that you have got rid of these ridiculous ideas of your own self-importance, you are useful to me. I am going to heal you. Take off those dirty shoes. You know you are wounded, but I will build you into the person I have always wanted you to be. And remember, you are never alone in knowing you've made a mistake. I've shared with some of you before how before Whitney Houston died, she sang at a very low profile comeback concert in Denmark, in very much a C-list venue. Sadly, by the fourth song, the audience was walking out because they could hear that her voice had gone. But what is much less known is that Whitney Houston grew up in a committed Christian household and was a gospel singer since she was a girl. And her people, her people at the New Hope Baptist Church in New, Z New Jersey in the States never stopped praying for her, never forgot her, never abandoned her even after the cocaine addiction took its jaw-like hold. That church, they decided they would simply wait for her. And at the end, she came home to them, to the loving safety of her church for her funeral in 2012, aged just 48. Her church's love for her went for miles beyond the end she suffered. And that church's love has engulfed her children like an ocean. Easter Day says, whatever has happened to you, you can still dream of restarting. 
Now, if you think all this theology is for holy types, think again. How many of you have been in your gardens these past few days? Raise a hand if you wish to confess. <laughs> Hands down, thank you. Well, you may know that the new spring television ad from B&Q, that great source of spiritual guidance, <laughs> Their new television ad says, a crack in the concrete, and we will grow again. We didn't lose hope, we planted it. A crack in the concrete, and we will grow again. We didn't lose hope, we planted it. Now, apart from their advertising agency also needing to work for the Church of England, <laughs> there is no one absolutely no one who will not get a second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance or a fifth or a sixth or a seventh my friends we count together and we will keep counting amen, amen. amen.